challenge the opposition to fact check. So I decided I would. I went away and had a look at a couple of things that have been said by the government and its support parties. I want to start with some things that the Māori Party and the ACT Party um, made mention of in their contributions yesterday. And it's something that they've said a few times. One of it is the statement is that New Zealand First doesn't support settlement bills. So I thought, well, I'll go and find out. I'll go and find out. So New Zealand First has been in this parliament since the 45th parliament, since 1996. We had a small break between 2008 and 2011 where we refreshed and came back in strength. And came back in strength. During that time, there were 54 settlement bills. During the time that New Zealand First has been in the House, there have been 54 settlement bills. Of those settlement bills, New Zealand First has voted in favour of 49. New Zealand First has voted against five. The ACT Party has voted against seven. Now let's be clear, when the government support parties want to talk about who supports settlements on record in the Hansard, they need to have a look at the people that they sit just down from rather than shouting across the House with regard to New Zealand First. And, and I would suggest to the government whip that if the government is going to include secret clauses that even Māoridom don't know about inside of legislation, yep. secret clauses that Māoridom don't even know about inside of education, then they should expect some opposition from the opposition. Let's also have a talk about the fact that the Māori Party yesterday took credit for, among other contributions or other um, things that they have achieved for Māori, was apparently free doctor's visits. Now I'll agree that the co-leader of the Māori Party amended that initial statement to say raising the age of. Now this is a party that says and colludes with others to say that New Zealand First doesn't stand for Māori and that the Right Honourable Winston Peters doesn't stand for Māori in this House. In 2005, free doctor's visits, which yesterday the Māori Party claimed credit for in their coalition with the national government, was introduced between, in a coalition, a memorandum of understanding between New Zealand First and the Labour Party. So let's get clear, uh, you cannot have it both ways, Mr Speaker. Alternative facts at the end of the day. Alternative facts will be shown to be exactly that. So if we keep going forward, Mr Seymour, for example, talked about expanding charter schools because they're doing so well. And I, actually, I believe that the Māori Party supported that vigorously yesterday. Let's just be clear. I believe that the co-leader of the Māori Party shouted out again and again and again that they're working for Māori. Let's be clear. 95 per cent. I don't need to talk to Mr Jackson, ma'am. You're speaking to the wrong party. I, they completely disregard the fact that 95 per cent of Māori students are in English medium schools in this country, completely ignoring all those Māori students that apparently the Māori Party doesn't care about because they're concentrating only on charter schools with the, in this supposed yeah. position of power. But let's be school. clear about their, their academic outcomes, shall we? Let's be clear. Last year, in November last year, the Ministry of Education put out a report quite clearly showing that the data that was used, Mr Seymour of the ACT Party stood up and said that Vanguard, for example, had 100 per cent NCA level 2 pass rate. What's unfortunate is there's a Ministry of Education report that says, oh dang, they didn't report it in the same way that every other state school has to report it. So that pass rate dropped to 60 per cent. 60 per cent. You fact check it, ma'am. If I have to, you do it. Sorry, sir, not you, Mr Speaker, but I suggest Ms. Minister Tolly might like to go and check the Ministerial Education Report. That's right. And then what we have, and then what we have is we have Fetu Tina achieved only two of their 18 targets. Only two of their 18 targets, but apparently this is doing wonderfully well for Māori students. So well that Mr Seymour says that this country should expand charter schools so that we can... Um, we can spread the profit margin around the uh, sector there. And not only that, but this government apparently has agreed with Mr Seymour to start opening science charter schools, technology charter schools, 
Perhaps other speakers from the government like to stand and, and take some call on that. Mr. Perhaps Mr. they could um, tell us how that works out. What was, interesting about, what was interesting about the Prime Minister's speech was he didn't say a thing about students. He didn't say a thing about students. He didn't mention the number of Victoria University students who have been walking around the street trying to find somewhere to live. He didn't talk about, he didn't talk about the students up in Auckland who have been swapping sex for somewhere to live. He didn't talk about the university student associations that are handing out more food parcels than they've ever handed out before. He didn't talk about the special needs students. It, the talk about fact check. Ms Parata stands and talks about how well this government is doing in education, and yet we have just had at the Education and Science Select Committee a, another review, around about the tenth review, of how badly, how badly we are delivering as a country for children with special needs. One in five children with dyslexia, one in eight children suffering from dyspraxia. So many, so many cases of autism now that we don't have any level of professionalism to deal with it. But one of the other things Mr English didn't comment on, workforce planning. Do we have any? Do we have any? We don't since this government removed it two years ago. Mr Joyce removed anybody's responsibility for workforce planning. But what we do have, and it was mentioned, it was mentioned in Mr English's speech, was a new global impact visa will be piloted to attract up to 400 young technology entrepreneurs. So there's 100 places for international candidates per year, but only 20 places to support current New Zealand entrepreneurs in technology is going to be funded by this government. This is what the Prime Minister said yesterday. But it, wait, there's more. Of those 100 places for international candidates per year, they get the opportunity for a three-year open work visa and are then eligible to apply for permanent residency. This is designed to attract those who may not be able to qualify under other visa categories. So we haven't got enough people coming into the country at the moment. We've got high levels of unemployment, particularly among our young people. 41,000 work visas were handed out last year. And this government's decided what we'll do is we won't tell the New Zealand public that actually we're not going to cut down on work visas. We're going to come up with something with another name for people who can't use the usual process for average everyday Joe, and we're going to give them another streamlined pathway into New Zealand. That's what we'll do, because that's what the New Zealanders are crying out for. We just won't tell them that's what we're going to do. We're sure they'll agree with us by the time it's too late to do anything about it. Sir, it was an interest, it's been an interesting debate from the perspective of alternative facts. Never before have I sat in this House and listened to so many people spin rubbish. The country has people living in cars, and Mr Seymour says that you should vote for the ACT Party because a, they have been delivering a rational economic policy that has allowed people to build their lives. Their lives in cars. Their lives where their children are so transient that they can't gain a proper education. And interestingly enough, it was the uh, proprietor of a charter school that made that statement to me, said, Oh, it's really difficult because Māori students are so transient. Oh my goodness, it's because they can't find a job, it's because they can't find a house, it's because they can't connect to their communities, and that is why the public school system's been saying it for years. Right. Charter schools is not the answer. This government's not the answer. Bring on 23rd of September.